Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another exploration. Now, if you've watched any of my live readings that I'm doing currently, um, I've been reading a book called The Lure of Sussex by a chap called R. Thurskin Hopkins. And published in 1928, he roams around Sussex with his mate Cecil Palmer and looks at different parts of our heritage. One of the things he mentioned in his book recently was the Ringma windmill. Or is it the Glyndebourne windmill? Well, there isn't much left of it. And in 1928, he says all that's left was the post. It was a post mill. So I wondered if anything was still left. And lo and behold, there still is. So let's see if we can find it. There's a footpath just here and will take us eastwards across the downs and I should tell you that I'm um, in between Ringma in East Sussex and Glyndebourne and ahead of me just to the right is the famous now landmark of Glyndebourne turbine, the um, wind electric generator. Curiously, I've just met a lady. I was just having some trouble with the camera and I was just trying to fix it. And a couple of ladies came past just up the lane where I am. And uh, they asked me if I was a bald explorer. And I said, yes, I'd seen my car. They hadn't actually seen any of my work, but they were intrigued. And I said what I was doing today about looking for the windmill. And they said, oh, there's not very much left. Um, and the, the, the first lady said, my father, watched it tumble down. He apparently was in Ringma um, in the pub and he heard that it was on its way down and came up and, and watched the thing tumble down. So that's quite incredible. Uh, and she said, I've got a painting on the wall. I very nearly said, any chance I could have a picture? But of course they're miles away. So I'm just walking up this little lane because it's not very far off the road that goes from Glind to Ringma and you can park up quite easily and just go along this little lane and you should be able to see it. The thing that you see of course is the turbine and it's quite interesting and I think obviously a deliberate a deliberate thing to place the turbine almost on exactly the same spot as the windmill and there it is. I can see the central post of the old Ringma or Glyndebourne windmill. Let's go and have a look at it. And here it is. Look at that. Hard to imagine. Well, not actually so hard. I'm going to say hard to believe that this was a windmill, but actually not that hard. I think that's a silly thing for me to say. Let's go around and have a look. So we've got the central post. It was a post mill, I think, built around 1700, something like that. And it stood here for 200 years, which is a substantial amount of time. What we now have is the support posts here. This old main post, which is um, probably oak, I would imagine, without a doubt. We've got one, the trestle. These are the support posts on the, on the side, four of those, and the actual post itself. On top of that, the windmill sits and it balances on, on top of that post. So when you look at this, you don't really fully get 
to the size in your mind because you would have had a ramp, some sort of ramp ladder um, effect. And you, if you look at some of the other videos that I've done of um, windmills, you'll see that I've been through them. There's Oakland's Mill and of course um, Jill Windmill, Oldlands, beg your pardon, Oldlands Mill. And so you have this ramp which goes up a certain way to get you up onto the first floor. And then when you're on the first floor, you may have two, three floors above that. So it would have actually been quite a, a tall thing. And given the landscape around here, would have been seen for miles. So lovely to, to see at least that relic. Now it tumbled down in 1927, I think it was, um, something like that. Uh, I may have got that wrong, it, but it was around that sort of time in the, in the 20s. As, as, as I say, the lady who I saw earlier said that her father had seen it come down. And there are some pictures extent that uh, show the wreckage. But what was fascinating for me is because it was in the book that I was reading and I'm doing live and they were talking a hundred years ago um, that this post was here and that was all, it was a sad thing. It sounded then that it was a bit of a derelict post, although I think the windmill when it collapsed, was it collapsed because it was completely derelict and it had been in a, in a state for perhaps 20 years unused. I would like to have brought my drone up here, um, which is I didn't think actually, and, and this is no doubt, I don't know, probably private land, but just for a few seconds, it would have been possibly okay, um, because from above, it would be interesting to see the circle, because you can almost make out the, the original circle that would have come round, because there would have no doubt been a tail on the post mill. I mean, I don't know the details of this one, but traditionally there's a, there's a tail piece that has, a, um, a, I think, an, an iron wheel on it that you can use that to turn the windmill around so that the sweeps face the wind. And uh, because, and that's something that uh, possibly the apprentice or the uh, miller boy would do is just to ensure that the windmill was facing into the wind all the time. Um, some of the more deluxe models, if you can call them that, have a, I think it's called a fan tail, uh, and that helps to know where the wind direction is and actually move the windmill round um, on its own or by some form of gearing system. I forget exactly how, how that all works. But that has a circle pattern and there's bits of hit this that you can sort of make out, which from 200 years, of course, would no doubt still be here. I sincerely hope that this will stand for another 100 years, even though it is slowly being eaten away by bugs and insects and various things. And of course, the weather is doing its best. The wind actually has just started to pick up and I noticed that the turbine is now, it's actually turned like the windmill would have done with the aid of a, a boy or what have you, um, and is now facing the wind and, and is going round. This still feels very solid here. I think it's gonna blow that over luckily, but it's, um, I'm not overly a great fan of wind turbines because for me they, they do appear like blots on the landscape, but this one, I think it's in sympathy with the fact that there was a windmill 
with turning blades to power the uh, stones to grind corn. And this new one behind me is here to generate electricity for the house and the opera, the opera house. The, the path continues down this way, but also through this gate here, another footpath through a kissing gate. And I imagine that this will take you down to Ringmer itself. Possibly an old route that a farmer may have brought his corn up, who knows. Anyway, that's been fantastic. I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Support what I do by becoming a patron and I will continue to make these videos. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Till next time, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye for now, bye bye.